Uh-huh. Yeah, today's co-host is this, uh, sleepy time Kirby, further insinuating the fact that I should be in bed, uh, mainly because this is the second time I've recorded this. But no, in all honesty, guys, welcome to Weeaboo Wednesday. This is when I take anime news that I steal from other places, Japan-related stuff, all this geeky stuff that you weebs love, and I put it in this news segment. And listen, I know you geeks like this kind of stuff. So I got a whole bag of gachapon right here. And if you want to see me open it, like I'm dead serious, there's like a ton of different gachapon in this bag. If you want to see me open it, I'm gonna need you to write, release the gacha or something stupid like that in the comment section below. Arigato gozaimasu everybody for showing up. Let's get into the first story, which is that Enen no Shobotai or Fire Force or Fire Feet, if you're an idiot like me, will be coming out and premiering season two, July 3rd, which July is a hot time of the year, if you know what I'm saying, so I think that's thematically correct with the theme of the show. If you haven't seen Enen no Shobotai or Fire Force or Fire Feet, I'll let you know a little bit about it. It's a series by Atsushi Okubo, and he is the mangaka who also made Soul Eater. It's a really cool show about some firemen they got some cool fire powers and they fight fire with fire. Probably a bad idea. Super awesome. Definitely check it out. Catch up now if you haven't already so you can watch season two. Iro Iro Atakedo. Panzer Dragoon VR or Voyage Record is the actual subtitle of that. Will be coming out later. No, they announced that there's going to be a Panzer Dragoon VR. And it's a pretty interesting concept when you really think about it. If you've ever played Panzer Dragoon, you'll realize you have full 360 view of what's around you, behind you, and you can shoot in all these directions as well at all the things that you're fighting against. So I think it would make a lot of sense in VR. And it's interesting because they're actually going to take levels from Panzer Dragoon, Panzer Dragoon Zwei, as well as Panzer Dragoon Saga, and they're gonna mishmash them all together. It doesn't sound like they're remaking everything, mainly because they've pitched this as a crowdfunder and they've said, which I'm assuming means, depending on the success of the crowdfunder, that they will release more chapters, I guess, according to the success of it. That in and of itself just kind of sounds a little slimy and makes me not really trust this as much, but still, it is an interesting concept, but I swore off of crowdfunders a long time ago. I donated to Star Mazer, still not out, Shenmue 3, Still hasn't given me all my physical rewards and the game was a disgusting mess. And Mighty Number no. 9, which is one of the worst games to ever come out of crowdfunding. Oh, as well as Ukulele, another crappy game. But I won't complain, I'm gonna move on to the next story. The Pokemon company are super busy developing some new stuff, which is really great to see because of course they just released the expansion to Pokemon Sword and Shield in the Isle of Armor. Go check that out if you haven't yet. But they also decided that they're gonna release Pokemon Smile, which which is a game that acts like a mirror on your smartphone. It uses the camera to view your face and show you it right there. And it's made as like a way to train children to brush their teeth better because it shows like little Pokemon that are possessed and they gotta brush them over to clean them off so that they can capture them and stuff. But let me tell you something. If you think your stupid little kid is good at Pokemon Smile, give me any kid and I will kick their ass in that game. I'm good as hell at brushing my teeth. No, but in addition to that, they also, in the same video, announced Pokemon Cafe Mix, which is a kind of eh, sketchy looking one. It's a puzzle game, which is going to be free, and it sort of looks like Yokai Watch Puni Puni or Wibble Wobble, where you gotta sort of match all the little faces and bubbles together and it clears out the level. I don't know. It looks cute and all, the art's nice, but the game itself looks kind of lackluster. And they announced, I guess, purchasable stuff in the game. So there's, I'm sure, tons of currency that you'll need to do anything fun. So I'm probably gonna stay away from that one. But no, there's gonna be a new Pokemon Snap. It's been 20 years and man, this new one looks amazing. The graphics are so beautiful and there's so much more to be realized now that there's so many more Pokemon, as well as like the world has been fleshed out so much and the way that they interact is completely different now. I'm super excited about this. This looks great and it's gonna be on the Switch. And you know, there's been a lot of whispers for a long time about whether or not they would make a Pokemon Snap remake. But let me ask you this, if they do make it, are they gonna bring those machines back from Blockbuster where you can go print your stickers, of which I did as a kid, and I really wish I could find them 
because that's such a nostalgia trip. But let me tell you, the best thing about this Pokemon Snap reveal is the way that that Blastoise eats that apple. Oh, did you see the way he goes at that thing? He didn't even think about it. He's like Merrill Howard Kalen with an apple. Jesus. I will guarantee you that I'll have like a thousand pictures and videos of this stupid Blastoise eating this apple. It never fails to make me laugh. But in the same video they also announced one final thing was that they're adding Pokemon Go Mega Evolutions. Now as someone who plays Pokemon Go daily, I don't give a damn about Mega Evolutions. I think they're kind of boring honestly. But I guess it's cool that they're still fleshing out Pokemon Go, so I welcome whatever they want to bring, I guess. The Tatsuya Comic Awards have been going on for the past four years, and they're a good place to find new, interesting, popular manga that I guess is up and coming in the manga world. Because what it is, is it's an award that gets given to the best manga that are voted on by people online. And this year, the grand prize went to Spy X Family, or Spy vs. Family, or Spy Cross Family. I don't know what the X is supposed to mean, but Spy X Family, which I have seen all over the place, apparently is the best manga as chosen by the fans. And that's cool, I guess that gives me more incentive to finally check it out before it winds up getting adapted, I'm sure, into an anime. But more interestingly to me is A Man and His Cat, which is a cute manga about a man who adopts a chubby cat, and that came in with the runner-up prize, so that's nice to see. As someone who likes fat cats and actually has a couple, this is pretty exciting to me. In November, there will be a Metabots collection released for the Nintendo Switch. Now, as of right now, it's only announced for Japan, and it makes sense because all the games look like they're very text heavy, and I don't think they're gonna localize that stuff, which would be awesome, but I don't think they will. But apparently there's just a ton of Metabots games all squished together on these two different versions. Of course, because they had to make two different versions like Pokemon with Metabi, and Rokusho as well. Pretty cool stuff, but uh, yeah, you can actually get them both together in this crazy collector's edition that comes with even more stuff. So if you're into Metabots, check that out. I personally liked Metabots a lot. And I think it's a nice homage to the series and maybe Metabots will be relevant on this channel sooner or later. Who knows? Go to Bukia. Anyway, Japanese film critics have awarded the Sumiko Gurashi movie the best animation of the previous year. Which is nice, because it's sort of like the little movie that could, you know? It's this cute little unassuming movie. It's really adorable. I like the characters a lot, and I want to see the movie myself. And it's just nice to see that they want it. Even though, unfortunately, because of pandemic, they're not actually going to be able to hold the 29th annual award ceremony and actually grant it to them. But congratulations, Sumiko Gurashi. I still love you. Boss Coffee released the most adorable little advertisement, and I did not see this coming. This is the second Boss Coffee ad that I was blown away by. It stars Shin-chan's father, Hiroshi, and basically goes over him reflecting on five years worth of memories watching Shinosuke grow up. Watching him grow up makes him think that maybe he has a way that he can still grow up himself. The ad even ends in a really sweet way saying to all the Hiroshis out there, basically kind of paying homage to the fathers that despite maybe not living in the best situation, do their best to make it through and take care of their families and have a great time even going through if they're not the most rich or, you know, the most affluent or anything like that. And it came out just around Father's Day too, so I guess that was really fitting. The director even had quite a bit to say about it, talking about how he had to show both the cool and not so cool sides of Hiroshi. Showing him rushing for the train and not quite making it. Also showing him having to change a diaper with his face. And even showing him and just his family together having a good time, him playing with his son and just all of them laying together. It's just super sweet and wholesome. For all of you who care, the sequel to Inuyasha, Yasha Hime the Half-Demon Princess, will be starting up in fall. So, start stocking up on popcorn now because that series is gonna be dope. And I guess to be cute, I could say something like, sit boy. Oh, and they finally revealed the new Smash Brothers character, which will be Min Min from ARMS. We knew it was gonna be an ARMS character, and to be honest, I don't think anybody was that excited because ARMS is kind of irrelevant and really wasn't that amazing. I don't know, am I the only one who thinks that? For a first party title, it was kind of trash. Either way, she looks pretty cool. She looks interesting in her own way, of course. And uh, unfortunately, she just wasn't the brown goddess of thickness that we deserved. So I don't know, maybe, you know, hey, maybe next time, right? Teruki Goto is an interesting kind of guy. He has been running for office in Japan 
for quite a number of years, and he's done some weird stuff in his time. Previously, he had actually done an ad of him completely naked holding a katana above his head. And he posted this along the other candidates photos as well, and it's just such a sight to behold. He's been vying for the position of governor of Tokyo of all places, and his most recent attempts to get people's attention was to dress in the cosplay of Lelouch from Code Geass. He's completely done up in the cloak and outfit with the hairstyled and everything like that. It actually is a pretty decent cosplay photo, but evidently he said that he took the photo somewhere around like two years ago, and it was after he had seen the Code Geass movie several times, and he wanted to kind of cash in on the hype around the series. But either way, I mean, it's pretty insane. It reads on the poster, I, Teroki Goto, command you, vote for me. You know, that's one way to uh, get prospective voters to come out and pay attention to you at least. I mean, hell, he's got my vote. And finally, there will be a sequel to Bloodstained. Bloodstained 2, Curse of the Moon, will be a sequel to the one Kickstarter that I didn't fund that was apparently really successful, and apparently the game itself was just really good. It was sort of a Castlevania successor, and it looks pretty much just like Castlevania. Very interesting looking game, and the trailer for the new one kind of made me interested enough to almost want to buy the first one and check it out. They actually preview four characters in the trailer, of which all look pretty interesting. Most interesting to me, though, is Hachi, which I'm assuming is a reference to Hachiko. And if you don't know who Hachiko is, well, it's a dog that's famous enough to have a statue of itself in Shibuya. Either way, this Shiba Inu possesses, like, a train, and it's just a big bipedal sort of train that goes around smashing stuff. Really weird for the theming of this game, but interesting nonetheless. Plus, Dominique be looking THICK! Either way, the game is coming out on basically everything, so if you want to get it, then get ready to, because apparently it is coming soon. They didn't announce the date, but coming soon could, I'm assuming, mean this year? Hopefully this summer? I don't know. I gotta get the first game and catch up, so yeah. And that's gonna do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I am incredibly tired. I'm gonna go to bed now. Why don't you go ahead and comment what your favorite story was, or comment if you want to see me open those gotcha pun, gotcha catch them all. Like the video as well, it does help me out. And I'm gonna link something right here if you wanna check it out, that would be wonderful. And it's probably something interesting that you would love to watch again if you've already seen it. Imagine this guy comes in for an interview wearing this looking dope fly as heck. And he's like, San koku na tenshi no yoni shonen yo shin wari nare. I love you guys. ATV on max power. <laughs>